Hi. Hi. <laughs> I am um, Maddie Scheiderly. I am I'm a social media intern and I'm representing the Center for Security Studies and Cyber Defense. We put on Conspiracy. So that's this is our whole doing. We've been promoting this for a couple months and I am here. Well, we're, we're a subsidiary of Anderson University and I'm here with a very special guest. So if you want to introduce yourself, go ahead. Hi, yes, I'm uh, Daryl Tagashi. I am the actually the uh, uh, chairperson for the executive uh, board for the uh, AU CSSCD. So I was awarded yeah. that uh, earlier this year. And I'm also uh, the vice president for InfoGuard, Indiana. So we're running for that. And then um, full time, you know, on my side job, I, I actually am teaching for uh, Purdue Global as a cybersecurity professional. So your job, InfraGuard, InfraGuard? InfraGuard. InfraGuard, is that, um, what is that? Tell us a little bit about what that is. That is a, a private non-for-profit um, organization that partners with FBI, and we uh, do a lot of partnerships with them to try to uh, bring out to the public sector and private sector um, infrastructure security, uh, different security um, uh, issues that are going on in the different sectors like finance, education, uh, communications, uh, water filtration, those kind of things, electronics, uh, those kind of things with that. So, yeah. so tell us a little bit about um, how, like your background, like how you came to be in this position where you are, like the, the your, your journey sort of to being well, I started out as being an operator in, a, in an old mainframe operations room, and that's where I started running reports and doing things like that. And I gradually worked my way up through being doing cabling, doing infra, uh, network infrastructure. Uh, back in the day where security wasn't much of an issue, it was more physical security, you know, trying to prevent people from getting into the data center or into the building, those kind of things. Uh, we didn't have much, inter we didn't have internet at the time, so there wasn't a, a remote access until wireless came into play, so I grew up through those ages, and then I became more of a manager. I um, did software development. I managed software developments internationally, Philippines, India, uh, United States, uh, and then I also managed an uh, enterprise uh, <coughs> company, which I was a network uh, which was out of Brazil and Spain that we had uh, different things for that. So I kind of grew up through that doing a lot of hands-on things. And then around 2015, actually 2005, I was given an opportunity to do adjunct work. And so I started teaching in that and got into more and more um, teaching, trying to, you know, cybersecurity started to grow. And we started teaching more about cybersecurity, and then I got more into when cybersecurity became more of a, an official term. Mm -hmm. Before we used to secure networks by hardening them, you know, patching them, kind of the same things you're doing now. But now you have more sophisticated things that you have to uh, look out for. So, so with this background mm -hmm. that you have, obviously you've done tons and tons of work. What brought you to conspiracy? Out to little old Anderson, Indiana, you know? <laughs> 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 well, you may be a little old Anderson, Indiana, but you have a great, uh, great program here at AU mm -hmm. on your cybersecurity program, um, plus with this flagship area, this building, and the things that uh, David is uh, doing here with their organization and doing things. That's kind of brought me to, to um, do this organization as well as um, trying to get more involved. Uh, I want to do more uh, cybersecurity awareness or helping, learning how to do different things to help the community. And through IECC, which is the uh, uh, Governor's Council, um, trying to do a lot of different things like that. I like partnering with organizations like uh, CSCD, you know, that um, can help us um, kind of bring some of that on because you do have a lot of good programs. Your president you. is, is <laughs> uh, yeah, has a lot yeah. of contacts and which has really helped out a lot and it's very impressive. Yeah, when I first came here, I had no idea that he had worked, like he like made the TSA basically, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like that, like that's, I don't know, it's just so interesting because I never imagined college presidents like doing that, like working with presidents and stuff. So it, we've been, it's been extremely amazing. I, full disclosure, I'm not a cybersecurity major. I'm actually a film major, uh -huh. but I work for the social media team. Okay. So I 
no, I know enough about cybersecurity and like how and like the um, like the, the working like the process. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I know some of the codes, but like with President Pistol being like with his background, it's it's just it's super cool because I'd never imagine college presidents doing that. So you, you could do a documentary. I could. Ooh. There you I go. could do that. There I do have go. I do have a history minor, so oh, that puts me go. that I, that's one step closer, you know. There you go. So yeah. spe speaking of like um, education and stuff, in your opinion, how important is cybersecurity in K to twelve institutions? Because with the mm -hmm. government uh, passing and like greenlighting all these different projects to get cybersecurity education in the hands of a younger generation, obviously it must be extremely important to them. So. Is it extremely important to you? Like, do you have any opinions on oh, that? Yes. Um, <laughs> I think it's uh, extremely important. Um, let me uh, kind of explain that. The, the, from the level of personal security, cybersecurity awareness, to, to the level of knowing I can do this as a job. I mean, you, you have to start early on. I mean, my kids, I think, was in middle school when they first got their first cell phone. Well, a lot of kids are a lot younger than that, and they're on yeah. iPads and yeah. all these different electronic tools. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they need to know about the online security, digital security, those kind of things to begin with to get them started on that. And then how that can progress into how they could make money with that. You know, I, I, can, you know, I can teach or I can, I can uh, consult or I can, you know, work at a job that actually does some of the stuff, for, you know, and you get paid for it. You know, like we used to say with uh, gamers, right? You know, like <laughs> kids playing games all the time, you know, yeah. it would be nice if he get paid to do that because as yeah. much time as he spends on that, you know, he could make a lot of money. But, yeah, it, it is very important. I think that... Um, like kids are, are pretty resilient, right? And mm -hmm. they, and the younger they kind of start in this mindset of cybersecurity, you know, what what things to, you know, like as parents used to say, we well used to have you got, sometimes you have a gut feeling that this is wrong, mm -hmm. you know, and if you do, you you should stop, right? Right. You know, so so the understanding those feelings, understanding those directions, as well as having the knowledge in your head to um, look and say, oh yeah, that seems suspicious I, I shouldn't do that or I shouldn't click on that link or just because they said oh you know you got five minutes to buy this <laughs> you know I'll give you 90 percent off you know <laughs> yeah I know what you said. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, like, yeah and then they have this clock ticking down you know it's the oh, suspicious yeah, pop-ups you know yeah, I gotta buy it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um but yeah and and I think the for us as adults or as as uh, the experts to be able to look at how, how can we pass on that knowledge in a way that you know will interest them, and then to reach the diverse or diverse group, because we don't always want just one group that you know maybe the more aggressive group says, oh yeah, you know, and they you know they'll probably figure that out on their own, but you got a lot of these people that are are just as good, but they're more shy, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you know I've met a lot of people that way, but but once you start them getting into down the path and it's like man gosh you know that <laughs> oh yeah yeah i kind of know that oh, well, yeah. you know and then they oh yeah I, I i forgot to tell you i did this you did that you know and so trying to get those people to kind of come out or kind of like a as we used to talk about is a, a safe zone mm -hmm. because sometimes i think kids you know just the demographic sometimes kids you know can be mean you know and you yeah. know, you, oh, you know all that stuff. You're just a smarty pants, you know, or something like that, yeah. you know. And so you, you need to have kind of like a safe zone for them to say, oh, they can kind of reach out and they can kind of develop, you know, without uh, feeling like they're going to, you yeah. know, that they're going to be ridiculed or anything like that. Well, I have uh, one more question for you, and then we'll wrap up. And it's not, it's not related to cybersecurity. Okay. It's, a, it's a silly question, okay. like just to get to know you better, you know. So, do you watch professional wrestling, or do you know, like, know about professional wrestling? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so you know how um, they have like walkout songs, like when they come oh, on stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you were a professional wrestler, what would what would your walkout song be? I saw that question. I yeah. had to think about. It. I um, think director uh, Brandon Will said that his was Enter Sandman because oh. um, he's oh. from New York. I think is what uh -huh. he said. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah. What would yours be? Uh, Survivor Journey. Oh, that's such a good song. <laughs> I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I told him I said 
um, I am actually, I live an hour, like I live an hour north of Pittsburgh is where oh. I'm originally from. Okay. So with, with the Steelers, uh, uh-huh. their fourth quarter, uh-huh. like song is Renegade by Sticks. <laughs> so I said that would be a good choice. Uh-huh. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm a huge Prince fan. Oh, so yeah. mine might be, uh, mine might be Let's Go Crazy. Oh, you know? yeah. That's I think a good that'd song. Be a, that'd that's be a, a really good song. Good song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love music. Music is a, like a huge thing uh, for me. I, so. I, um, <laughs> I uh, was a music major. I played violin. Oh. I play violin and guitar and keyboards. Awesome. And, and my composing. um, my boyfriend is a music major, so he plays. Oh. He plays bass. He plays guitar. He can do keys. I play okay. drums. Oh, <laughs> I was in drumline for four years in high my, school. So my son did drums. It's yeah. awesome. It's so much fun. Just you know, <laughs> just going, just going at yeah, it. Yeah, he so. was on drumline too. So yeah. yeah. What uh, what drum did he play? Uh, he played the the, the quince. Yes. Get out of here. Me too. Oh, really? I played, well, I played snare for three years, and then I was drum captain. I played Quince my last year, so oh, that was my okay. senior year. So yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Got sidetracked, but that's, okay. that's, our, that's our closing <laughs> question. So <laughs> thanks so much for agreeing to be a part of this podcast, oh, and well, thank thanks you. for coming to Conspiracy. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. You've got a great place here. Thank yeah. you. Thank Good you so much. This has been awesome. I want to see that documentary. <laughs> When I get to it, I'll, when I get to it, I'll send it to you. Absolutely. I'll find, I'll find you. I'll send it right to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.